Now listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning, Bumley Police Station. How can I help you? Yes, I need to report a stolen bag. Just a moment, and I'll put you through to lost and stolen property. Hello, Sergeant Rhodes speaking. Can I help you? Yes, hello. I'd like to report a stolen bag. Hmm. Okay, a stolen bag. Uh, we've been getting a lot of these lately. I'll need to get some details. Uh, let's see. Uh, when was the last time you had your bag? Well,、uh, about two hours ago. I just can't believe this has happened. I take it everywhere with me. It was given to me as a graduation present. I'm just so upset. Yes, I know.、Uh, it's very frustrating. It seems like I put it down for a second, and then it was gone. Yes. Look, the good news is that most of the stolen bags in our area are found, usually without the money. So I'd be surprised if you don't get it back later. Tell me, what does the bag look like? Well, it's dark blue, cylindrical. It has two carry handles either side of a zipper on top.、Um, the zipper actually runs the length of the bag. It's a Vitoli bag. Okay. Are there any other identifying marks on the bag? Things that would be unique to it,、um, name tags, scuff marks, that kind of thing. Well, not really.、Um, there are a couple of scratches in the top left corner on one side of the bag near the handle, and I think another one in the opposite corner. Okay,、uh, scratches on opposite corners. Now. Where were you when the bag went missing? Well, I remember the time. It was a quarter past twelve. Oh no, actually, it was a bit after that, more like twelve twenty-five, because I was supposed to meet one of my friends for lunch at twelve thirty. Anyway, I was standing outside the supermarket when all of a sudden a group of teenagers came walking past. They must have been heading towards the cinema. They seemed to be in a hurry and probably late for the movie, so I stepped aside to let them by. When they'd passed by, I reached down to pick up my bag, and it was gone. I see. Now, can you remember the contents of the bag? Yes.、Um, let's see. My passport and some traveler's checks. Fortunately, I was carrying my camera, and I had my wallet in my pocket. They're the main valuable things.、Um, okay.、Uh, anything else at all? Hmm. Let's see. No, I think that was it. Oh, a few pens, but that's all, really. As I say, nothing of real value. Okay, I'm going to have to get your details. Are you here on holiday? Yes. As a matter of fact, I am. I'm visiting from Canada. I've been here for three weeks already, but I'll be here for another month. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Now,、uh, have you contacted your credit card company? Yes, I did that immediately. They were very helpful. I still can't believe this could happen to me, and while I'm supposed to be enjoying myself on holiday. Yes, it's a real disappointment, whether you're on holiday or not. The thieves strike when you least expect it. Anyway, I need to take down your particulars.、Um, what's your name then? Yes,、uh, my name is Helen Reddy. That's R E A D Y. My address is. Well, the place where I'm staying here is the Palms, Unit Fourteen, Seventy Five Paradise Avenue. Okay, I may need your home address in Canada, but I'll get that more towards the time you're going to leave.、Uh, what about the telephone? What number will I be able to reach you on? Yes, it's four double five nine one double three two. Okay, four double five nine one double three two. And how much do you think the bag and contents are worth? Well, it's not really a big cost, probably only a hundred dollars. It's the inconvenience of it all. I understand. Look, 
We have a lot of lost or stolen property recovered daily. Come by the station tomorrow and have a look. As I said, there's a high chance that we'll get the bag back. Your passport at the very least. Okay, thanks for your help. See you tomorrow then. Bye. Yes, bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Hi, everyone. I'm a bit nervous about doing this, so... Uh, anyway, as you all know, I come from Libya and I'm going to talk about sandstorms. Sandstorms are very common in the Sahara Desert, and so people in Libya, which is near the Sahara Desert, know all about them. Now, we say sandstorm, but it's not really a storm. There's no rain or thunder and lightning. There are sandstorms when a strong wind picks up sand and carries it. As the wind blows, the sand in the wind causes more sand to move around and that is also picked up. A very strong wind can pick up a huge amount of sand. Look at my first image on the board, here. As you can see, a severe sandstorm looks like a huge wall or wave of sand. Can you imagine that coming towards you? Now, I will tell you what you should do if you know a sandstorm is coming, or even if you get caught in a sandstorm. Extract 2 So, have you decided where you're going on holiday yet? You were talking about Spain. No, we've changed our minds. We're going to Egypt for two weeks. Wow, really? When are you going? The second week in August. Egypt in August? You're brave. It'll be absolutely boiling then, won't it? Yeah, that's what I want. We'll go and see the sights early in the morning when it's still quite cool and then lie around by the swimming pool in the midday heat. Hmm, I went to Morocco in the summer a few years ago. I couldn't sleep until about two in the morning. I always said that if I went anywhere like that again, I go in the spring or autumn. Well, I can't wait. You just see my tan when I get back. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Good evening, Professor Drake, and welcome to the programme. Good evening. Now, as we have heard, it appears that there are a greater number of hurricanes now, particularly in the Atlantic, and that hurricanes are becoming more violent and causing more damage. First of all, could you explain what causes a hurricane? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, hurricanes, or tropical cyclones as they are also known, are really huge storms, or a number of storms that occur together within a small area. 
They are caused by low pressure and moist air rising from the Earth's surface, usually the surface of the sea. As the moist air rises, it becomes warmer, and this is what forms the hurricane. If the hurricane is strong enough, it will develop an eye. The eye, which is circular, is at the center of the hurricane and can be huge, 300 kilometers in diameter, perhaps. The eye is usually calm. It is the area around the eye, the eye wall, where the storms occur. The eye wall surrounds the eye like the wall of a huge vertical passage, and is made up of the strong winds that cause the damage when the hurricane passes over land. Spreading out from the eye wall is the vast area of clouds and rain that we call the rain bands. These rain bands can spread for hundreds of kilometers. Thank you for that, Professor. Now, why is it that the world is experiencing a greater? Extract four. Floods occur when the water level rises in an area where there was previously little or no water. Floods can be dramatic. They occur suddenly, and the water level rises quickly. Or creeping, the water level rises over a longer period of time. They occur either because there is a larger amount of rainfall in an area than is usual, or because ice melts. Floods generally cause damage and negatively affect the economy of an area, but they can also be beneficial. The River Nile floods annually, and the water brings nutrients to the soil in surrounding fields. This, of course, means better crops. Most floods occur naturally, but they can be. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 3. Now turns to Part 3. Mr. Bob Ross called while Mr. David Morris was not in the office. His secretary answered the phone and took a message for him. As you listen to the phone call, look at the message form and fill in it with the information you need. First, you will have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Mr. Morris's office. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. May I speak to Mr. Morris? I'm afraid he's not in at the moment. Who's calling? This is Bob Ross of the Sales Association speaking. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Bob Ross. R-O-S-S. -S. Do you have any idea what time he'll be back? No, I don't, Mr. Ross. Would you like to leave a message? Yes. Will you tell Mr. Morris that I talked with Bill Smith in London this morning? Bill Smith? That's right. Bill told me that they are planning to have a sales meeting in Birmingham on the 12th, 13th and 14th of May. Yes, I have that. Birmingham, May the 12th, 13th and 14th. Right. And tell him that Bill said that they would like to have Mr. Morris speak to the group on the morning of the 12th. They want Mr. Morris to speak to the group? Yes, at 9 o'clock on the morning of the 12th. There will be about 80 people in the group. I see. Mr. Morris will be speaking to a group of about 80 people. Yes, about 80 salesmen from all over the country. And they'd like him to describe the new marketing plans. Where is the meeting to be held? At the Grant Hotel. Anything else? No, that's the message. May I have your phone number, just in case? Yes, that's 0800-222-2000. 
805-7492. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Ross. I'll give Mr. Morris the message as soon as he comes back. Five minutes later, Mr. Morris comes back. I'm back. Did I have any calls? Yes, Mr. Hill called. He didn't leave a message. He said he'd call back tomorrow morning, and uh, James Turner called twice. He's anxious to talk with you. He'd like you to call him as soon as you can. Did he leave a number? Yes, here it is. And Mr. Ross called just a few minutes ago. Did he want me to call him back? No, he left a message for you. Here it is. Mr. Morris called James Turner as soon as he came back. As you listen, complete the notes by writing no more than three words on each line. Now you will have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. One five six two four eight eight. Could I speak to Mr. Turner, please? Speaking. Oh, it's you, James, is it? David here. Oh, hello, David. My secretary told me that you had called twice. Is it anything important? Yes, it looks as if I won't be able to keep the appointment we made. That was to be on Thursday, wasn't it? Yes, I'm so sorry. My uncle is arriving from America that afternoon, and we're having a party in the evening. You know, a big family party. I see. But could we meet on Friday or Saturday, or would you prefer the beginning of next week? Afraid I'm tied up at the weekend, and let me just check. Uh, Monday would be all right, I think. Monday's okay for me too. Oh, good. Shall we say the same time as we arranged? Could you come here at 11 o'clock? I'll show you around our place. We could have lunch together, and then work out the terms of our contract in the afternoon. Yes, fine. I'll just note it down in my diary. That's Monday the 24th of April. Right, I'll be at your place at 11 o'clock. Hope I haven't messed up your arrangements too much. Oh no, these things happen, don't they? See you next Monday, and have a nice weekend. Thanks, you too, David. Bye. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear an introductory lecture about vegetarianism being given by a nutritionist. First, look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen to the lecture and answer questions 31 to 40. <clears throat> you will all have a vague understanding of what being a vegetarian is all about. Vegetarianism has been practiced for thousands of years. The simplest definition is someone who doesn't eat meat, of course, but does abstaining from eating meat include seafood and chicken? The fact of the matter is that people adopt the label vegetarian but still eat meat, at least to varying degrees. Within true vegetarianism, that is where a vegetarian is someone who doesn't eat any meat at all, there are three subgroups. A lacto-ovo vegetarian eats no meat but does consume dairy products and eggs. The second subgroup, lacto-vegetarians, also don't eat meat 
but while they will consume dairy products, they don't eat eggs. And then of course there are vegans, people with a strict vegetarian diet that don't eat any animal product or byproduct, including honey. In fact, they don't even wear woolen, leather or silk garments. So just keep in mind that there is an obvious sliding scale here when people talk about vegetarianism. There are those that perhaps like to think of themselves as vegetarian just because they don't eat red meat, right through to those strict vegans who will only eat vegetables, fruit, beans or pulses. That is, food that has been grown. For our purposes today, We'll be talking about vegetarians as those people who don't eat any form of meat at all, red meat, fish or poultry, but do use dairy products and eggs. Lacto-vegetarians and vegans are not in the majority anyway. With that definition in mind, let's review the myriad of reasons given for adopting a vegetarian diet. These include all sorts of preposterous theories that claim all humans should be vegetarian simply because it's natural, or that humans are naturally vegetarian because biologically we resemble plant eaters. In the real world, vegetarians, generally speaking, accept that humans are omnivores. They are capable of eating both plant and meat foods. Statistics show that the majority of vegetarians have adopted a vegetarian diet because of their religious beliefs as in the case of Hindus and Buddhists, for example, or because of health-related concerns. That is, they see vegetarianism as a healthier alternative. Look, that's not to say there aren't other reasons. Some people just don't like the taste of meat and others simply can't afford to buy it. A significant number of vegetarians are animal liberationists who are against the killing of animals for human consumption. These vegetarians have taken the step of refusing to eat meat and in doing so, show that they don't condone those killings. They see the whole industry as barbaric. In the past, at least in my social circle, such a cause was seen as noble and many of us held vegetarians in high regard. They lived up to their beliefs. In more recent times, as we see the disastrous impact of introduced hooved animals on lands and the amount of resources used to feed stock at the expense of using arable land for crops, their noble cause has been ecologically justified as well. Land resources, and arable lands in particular, are scarce and becoming scarcer. Perhaps it is wrong to allocate these resources to raising those animals which provide us with a food source that we can live without. But is this the case? Can we live without meat in our diet? And is living a vegetarian lifestyle indeed more healthy as advocates would have us believe? Vegetarians claim that a well-balanced vegetarian diet will supply all the essential nutrients we need to be healthy. In Western societies, as late as 20 or 30 years ago, there were many myths about vegetarianism. Those switching to vegetarianism would be warned about serious vitamin deficiencies. Statistically though, the vegetarians are supported in their claim that vegetarians are healthier than meat eaters. The incidence of heart disease and cancer, for example, are significantly lower in non-meat eaters. In fact, it's claimed that the risks from certain cancers are reduced by up to 40% in a vegetarian diet. And let's face it, in modern Western society, with our concerns regarding obesity, you don't see too many overweight vegetarians, do you? Vegetarians consume less fat and protein than we do, and the fat that they do consume is in the main unsaturated, which is what has been recently labelled good fat. On the other hand, animal fats tend to be saturated, and an increased intake of saturated fats can lead to high cholesterol. Respiratory problems too seem less common in vegetarians, but this is also the case with meat eaters who include a lot of fruit and vegetables in their diet. The UK Vegetarian Society's website quotes medical research has shown that on average, a lifelong vegetarian visits hospital 22% less than a meat eater. 
The fact that the number of practicing vegetarians has almost doubled in the last 15 years speaks volumes about the way our concerns for healthy living have changed. The reasons given for this increase have been, according to a recent survey, 94% due to the perceived health benefits associated with a vegetarian lifestyle. <clears throat> Doctors and nutritionists and responsible groups like the Vegetarian Society are rightly concerned that those adopting the vegetarian diet do so in an informed way. There are health benefits to be gained by turning vegetarian, but there are also guidelines that need to be followed. Vitamin B12, for instance, and recommended amounts of iron are not easily found in a vegetarian diet, and yet they are vital for healthy living. So, where can such vitamin and mineral replacements be found in the vegetarian diet? Well, for the average vegetarian, good sources of iron are spinach, prune juice, or dried fruit. Vegetarians are advised to eat these foods with fruit juices which will increase the amount of iron absorbed. B12, on the other hand, is not as readily available because it is only found, to all intents and purposes, in meat, fish and dairy products. This vitamin is one which vegetarians find difficult to replace. However, as I said, low amounts of B12 can be found in dairy products as well as soy products or seaweed. For the stricter lacto-vegetarian and vegan, B12 can be obtained from foods that have been fortified with the vitamin. Vegetable margarines, some soy products and breakfast cereals are the most common sources. The key to a healthy vegetarian diet is the same as any other diet. Eat a wide variety of foods including grains, fruit and vegetables, beans, pulses and nuts. Vitamins and minerals must be included in the vegetarian diet just as they have to be included in a non-vegetarian diet. You can argue all you like about vegetarians being healthier, but I'd suggest that you consider a well-balanced diet first and foremost. Whether or not you include meat is up to you. A good vegetarian diet closely matches the dietary recommendations for a healthy meat-eating diet. There's an excellent website which I suggest you look at if you want further information on vegetarianism, it's www.vegsoc.org. www.vegsoc.org. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.